of us we chanted just now on an auspicious day is one of the few places in the whole canon where the Buddha talks about being in the present moment. Don't go longing after the past. Don't go placing your expectations on the future, he says. When he talks about the present, it's not just being in the present or accepting the present as it is without any judgment. He says, one, you clearly see what's happening, particularly in the mind. That's where you want to focus. And then secondly, you do your duty with regard to what's coming up in the mind. So there's something you actually do. The duties here, of course, come from the Four Noble Truths. If you see that there's any suffering in the mind, you want to comprehend it. If you comprehend it to the point where you can see what's causing it, then you want to abandon the cause so that ultimately you can realize cessation. And you do all this by developing the path, all the good qualities that need to be developed. That includes abandoning the things that need to be abandoned. So a choice is to make here. You're not just hanging out in the present moment, because you're realizing that the present moment has consequences. It leads to the future. And you have those duties to keep in mind. That gives you reference back to the past. So it's not just pure present awareness. There are states of concentration where things get narrowed down to very precise time in the present moment, but you've got to maintain the concentration. It doesn't maintain itself. So even there, there's a duty. Other times when the mind is not in concentration, you've got to figure out, what I need to do? What are my duties right now? Here at the monastery, things are pretty simple. You don't have too many conflicting duties. We're all here for training the mind. We have work that we have to do, but the work periods are not overwhelming. We don't have to multitask. What we have to do is focus on what we're doing right now and what we should be doing right now. This ties in with another passage where the Buddha says, to remind yourself, days and nights fly past, fly past. What am I becoming right now? You become, of course, through your actions. So what are you becoming by the way you act? What kind of person are you turning into by the habits you've got? And it's not the direction you want to go. So again, the present moment is not an isolated moment. It builds on the past. It has a certain direction to which it flows in the future. And you focus on the present because you have a choice. You can continue flowing in the way you're going, or if you don't think it's wise, you can change the direction of the flow. Notice it in this verse. The Buddha brings in the whole issue, you do your duty now because who knows, tomorrow may not come. Tomorrow may be death for you. In other words, you're in the present moment because you're heedful, not because you want to enjoy how nice the present moment is or to squeeze what little bit of pleasure you can out of it. You're because your choices have consequences, and you've got this opportunity right now to make them have good consequences. So what should you be doing right now? At the moment, you're focusing on the breath. If the mind slips off, you bring it right back. That involves the three qualities that the Buddha said have to be brought to the establishing of mindfulness. There's a popular belief that mindfulness simply means being in the present moment, but again, the Buddha never said that. Mindfulness is a quality of memory. You remember certain things. In this case, you remember your duties. And they're good duties, the ones assigned by the Four Noble Truths. They're for the sake of your own true happiness. They're not arbitrarily imposed by somebody out there who just wants to push you around. They're taught by the Buddha because he thought these are the most valuable things that human beings need to know the most valuable duties they need to keep in mind. So you keep that in mind, whatever your duties are. And then you notice you're alert to what you're doing and what the consequences are right now, because sometimes the consequences don't wait until tomorrow or the next week or your next life. They appear right now. You spit into the wind and it comes right back at you. You put your hand into a fire, you can burn it right now. So you look at what you're doing and seeing, <clears throat> and see what the consequences are that you can see right now. Sometimes nothing seems to be happening, and that's when you have to fall back on your memory. But this takes time. 
the mind has been jumping all around all day, you sit down, it's going to want to continue jumping because that's its habit. This is where we have to bring ardency in. If the mind jumps away, you just drop whatever it is that it was following and you find yourself back with the breath. And you try to stay here. And you try to stay here with sensitivity. This is where the pleasure in the present moment comes in as you try to be with a pleasant sensation in the body that you create through the way you breathe, through the way you perceive your breath. Think of the breath coming in and out through all the pores. It can flow anywhere in the body. So any place there's a sense of tightness or blockage, hold in mind a perception that allows your, your mind to believe, okay, you can get through the blockage. No matter how solid your bones may be, there's a lot of space inside the atoms of the bones. So you can think of the breath flowing through that space. So as to create a sense of ease, fullness, refreshment throughout the body. And the present moment is not a wonderful moment on its own. It's a good place to stay because you've learned how to remember what to do with the breath. You learn how to be alert to what you're doing with the breath, and you learn how to be ardent in doing it well. At other times when you're not meditating, there may be other chores you have to do. There are times when you do have to think about the future, plan for the future. There are times when you have to remember specific things that happened in the past. So you're not totally abandoning the present and future as you practice. But when you're sitting here doing concentration, you want your attention to be more and more and more totally right here. But again, with that sense of mindfulness. If you lose your mindfulness, the concentration drifts into what and John Lee calls delusion concentration, where you lose sense of where you are in time and space. You come out and you just wonder, what was that? Was I awake? Was I asleep? You're still, but there's no mindfulness, there's no real alertness, just a minimal amount of alertness. And very little ardency. Now, ardency doesn't mean that you have to sweat and strain. In fact, if you do a lot of sweating and straining, it's not going to be pleasant to be here. But it means that you are on top of things. What are you doing right now? What you should be doing right now? Are you doing what you should be doing? If not, what can you do to bring the mind to want to do it? So the establishing of mindfulness is very intimately related to the duties of the Four Noble Truths. That quality of ardency is what we're carries out those duties. Mindfulness keeps those duties in mind. And John Munn, toward the end of his life, was talking about his teaching. His teaching style, he said there were some things that he didn't reveal to everybody. He was very quiet about his psychic powers. We read about them in books and magazines everywhere. Now. But when he was alive, he very rarely talked about them. He would mention them to students who were having similar experiences in their meditation. And the lesson was meant for them as to what they should do when they meet up with that kind of problem. But the teaching, he said, that he taught to everybody with open hands. The teachings were two, one the Four Noble Truths, and the other was the Four Establishments of Mindfulness. And remember, the Four Noble Truths have their duties, and the establishing of mindfulness is using your powers of mindfulness to remember those duties and to carry them through as you stay here with the breath, as you maintain this awareness of the present moment. There's no conflict between the two. They're intimately related. We always have to keep that point in mind. We're not just here to hang out in the present and enjoy the present moment and think that that's all there is. The breath here is part of a path. Your concentration on the breath is part of a path. It's going to take you someplace if you keep at it. So try to keep these points in mind, that we're here to figure out what is our duty right now. What duty needs to be done? I'll do it today, because who knows, I may not have this chance tomorrow. If we die, it takes a long time to get back to the practice. Think how long it took you in this lifetime to find your way to be, being right here, sitting right here, learning how to train the mind. 
and the next time around it may be a lot longer than that if you're not careful. So you've got this opportunity right now. Focus on the right now because it's a place where the practice is done, where you can make a difference. That's what it means to be with the present, to see it clearly, and once you see clearly what's going on, realize what your duties are right now, and you do them. That's when being in the moment is really auspicious.